ESL partners with Riot Games for both League of Legends and Wild Rift. EA, instead of Take-Two, is now acquiring Codemasters, and eSports has been named an official medaled sport for the 2022 Asian Games. All that and more on the last This Week in eSports for 2020, December 14th through December 20th. I'm your host, Mark Kai, and let's get right into it. For partnerships, Fnatic has signed an exclusive retail partnership with Excite, Kuwait's largest electronic retailer, to enter into the Middle East market. The partnership marks the first time Fnatic Gear products will be available in the Middle East, and the organization's gear will be obtainable in over 50 stores across Kuwait and the KSA by next year. Middle Eastern consumers will now have access to Fnatic product lines, including React headset, Mini Streak keyboard, and the new Streak 65 compact keyboard. This partnership builds off of another key distribution deals made earlier this year in Japan, Singapore, and India. Obviously, there's a market for Fnatic to enter here. I'll be following what else they do in the Middle East. The Philadelphia Eagles, they signed a multi-year partnership with Esports Entertainment Group to serve as the official esports provider. The partnership sees EEG become the first esports tournament provider for any NFL club. EEG will operate biannual Madden NFL esports tournaments for the Eagles utilizing the Esports Gaming League platform. Esports Entertainment Group will work with the Eagles players to create custom videos that will promote the tournaments across multiple digital channels. EEG offers fixed odds wagering, fantasy, and pools on various esports events. It also owns and operates online sportsbook SportNation.Bet. Through esports, Sports Gaming League EEG organizes both live and online events and tournaments in addition to both live broadcast production as well as game launches and online branded tournaments. For such a seasoned sports team like the Eagles to come in and become an EEG shareholder shows lots of promise for the future of EEG. Let's see where they can take this. Gillette, they've partnered with The Yard, HBCU Esports Alliance, a diversity initiative for historically black colleges, as well as CSL Esports, a program that creates opportunities for schools through esports. The Groom to Game initiative will feature Gillette's skin guard razors and a chance to win prizes and scholarships. Students from HEA member schools will play in EA Sports Madden NFL 21 during the league season, which begins in February 2020. Specific prices were not disclosed, although the grooming ban will focus its efforts on promoting the skin guard razors, which are designed for men who are more prone to razor bumps. Student matchups played inside the Madden's The Yard mode will feature a Gillette style zone, which will allow for gamers to customize their avatar's facial hair and hairstyle in the game. This seems like a great initiative to help out two organizations working to help those looking for opportunities within the esports space. Team by Vitaly and Adidas, they revealed the limited edition Vitaly number no. 2 Dragon Ball Z sneakers. The new and exclusive X9000 L3 have been influenced by Dragon Ball Z as well as Team Vitality branding to see sneakerhead culture collide with the world of esports and manga as well. The sneakers have been specifically designed by esports athletes to fulfill their needs, creativity, and aspirations. It also draws from Dragon Ball Z for inspiration. While this may seem like an ad, there simply aren't that many sneaker and esports collaborations, Puma and Cloud9 being the one of the most recent, so this is really nice to see as well. Misfits Gaming Group, they join SPAT TV's Creative Collective as a part of the partnership MGG will lend Creative Collective its media representation rights across all properties for streaming services and distribution. SPAT TV's Creative Collection consists of content creators, filmmakers, producers, marketing specialists, and media production companies such as PRG, Esports Locker, Unbridled Media, Movers and Shakers, and the Ridley Scott Creative Group. MGG is the first esports organization to join SPAT TV's Creative Collective. By partnering with companies such as SPAT TV, MGG aims to assist in the continued growth of the industry as a whole. Given how big streaming services and distribution is getting, I'll be curious to see if other orgs might follow in Misfit's steps here. ESL, they announced they're hosting Wild Rift Esports in Malaysia and Thailand in 2021. In addition, ESL will also host a collegiate Wild Rift tournament in Thailand next year. The competitive circuit will begin in April of 2021 with an open qualifier system to identify the best teams in each respective region. Local champions will then advance to represent their country in the larger Southeast Asia regional tournament. ESL will additionally host Wild Rift Open Cups on its ESL Play platform in 2021 to provide additional opportunities for aspiring teams to compete. More information on next year's Wild Rift Esports plans is said to be disclosed in the coming weeks. ESL is smart to diversify the games that they're doing tournaments for. The biggest property is CSGO, but having multiple games is always better for their partners and leaves them more options as well. So congrats ESL here. For finance and M&A, EA revealed the acquisition of Codemasters, which nullifies Take-Two's acquisition of Codemasters. EA announced that it is reached an acquisition agreement with the board of directors of Codemasters. With the agreement, EA overtakes Take-Two's Interactive, which previously came into agreement with Codemasters on preliminary acquisition terms. The 
acquisition is anticipated to be completed in Q1 of 2021. While Take Two's offer put Codemasters valuation at approximately 900 million US dollars, Codemasters' new agreement with EA raises its implied enterprise value to roughly $1.2 billion as Codemasters' existing shareholders will be entitled to receive $8.08 .08 in cash for each ordinary share of the company. This can only mean great things for Codemasters if two larger publishers are vying for their acquisition. Control Freak has been acquired by SteelSeries, the Danish gaming and peripherals accessory manufacturer. SteelSeries announced that it is acquired Atlanta-based controller accessories maker Control Freak. The Control Freak brand will be continued within the SteelSeries organization as a wholly owned subsidiary. Since SteelSeries and Control Freak are both private companies, both parties agree not to disclose any financial terms of the acquisition. So, so this continues along the trend of bigger peripheral companies taking over smaller ones like Logitech owning Astro or Corsair owning Elgato. Congrats SteelSeries and Control Freak here. As far as workforce changes go, NFL exec Bill McCullough joins FaZe Clan as the executive vice president of content. McCullough spent nearly two years in the vice president of content development role at the NFL and nearly two more years as the VP and creative director. Throughout the years, McCullough has worked in various roles at GoFundMe, GoPro, HBO Sports, QVC, New Sport, and Wonderland Productions. Congrats, Bill, on this move. Huge to see traditional sports execs moving into esports now. Wim Stocks, formerly the CEO and chairman of CSL Esports, has joined the gaming arena developer Belong as the senior vice president of partnerships and commercial at Belong, who oversee all elements of endemic and non-endemic partnerships here. The acquisition sees Vindex continue to bolster its leadership team following the acquisition of Belong from UK-based Game in July. Vindex previously announced that it has plans to develop 500 Belong scores in the US and a further 1,000 in other countries, investing $300 million over five years. Vindex was founded by MLG co-founders Mike Sepso and Sundance DiGiovanni, launching with $60 million of investment following a successful Series A round. Congrats, Wim, on joining Belong here. Similarly, Vindex hired Marshall Zelaznik as the CEO of Esports Engine. The company is working with publishers, teams, and agencies on everything from broadcast to production to pull off various events in gaming. Zelaznik helped start up offices around the world for the UFC and also has worked on global projects for Activision and he says he envisions his role to be somewhat similar for esports engine. Marshall previously has held executive positions at UFC, In Demand, Blizzard, and Glory Kickboxing where he was most recently CEO before joining esports engine. Congrats Marshall for joining esports engine. Netflix exec Shauna Spenley joined Riot Games as the global president of entertainment. Spenley will head up the new entertainment division for Riot Games where she will take charge of related consumer products, music, animation, and film and television products among other things. Spenley spent nearly two years as the vice president of marketing and publicity at Netflix, but close to 15 years working at Netflix, including roles like VP of marketing for North America and Australia and New Zealand, and head of consumer products and creative marketing director of original series. Prior to joining Netflix, she worked at WB Television Network, CBS Outdoor, Fox Entertainment Group, and Creative Arts Agency. Congrats, Shauna, on joining Riot and heading into some really cool initiatives there. Nurtured Gamers that hired Jonathan Othun as the director of national programming. Othun will be responsible for the development of live events across North America, along establishing new revenue generation opportunities. Othun joins Nerd Street Gamers after a two-year spell as the president of eSports Stadium Arlington. He left his post due to ownership restructuring at ESA prior to NSG on December 11th. Jonathan has a ton of experience in the eSports space with ESA. I'm excited to see what he does with Nerd Street Gamers given their recent new facility launch. As far as new stuff goes, the Oceanic League of Legends eSports is set to return with ESL and Guinevere Capital. ESL Gaming has partnered with Guinevere Capital to reintroduce top-tier Oceanic League of Legends eSports sports in 2021. Earlier this year, Riot Games pulled the plug on the region's top competitive league, discontinuing the Oceanic Pro League. However, in a new development, ESL and Guinevere will obtain a three-year license to operate a League of Legends competition in the region with an option to extend a further three years as well. There will be eight teams in the new league in 2021, the same number as the previous OPL. So there's still hope here. ESL and Guinevere Capital are coming to save the day for Oceania and its League of Legends esports. The LCS, they announced major structure changes with the new tournament introduced for 2021. The league commencing January 15th has introduced the LCS lock-in for the upcoming season, an inaugural three-week tournament that offers $150,000 to the winning team, plus a $50,000 for the team to donate to a charity of its choice. The performance in this competition will contribute to the regular season or playoff seeding as well. Like before, the season will be split into two parts, spring and summer. However, the regular season records will be now combined to seed the penultimate LCS championship playoffs. The spring playoffs have also been renamed to the Mid-Season Showdown, or MSS. The MSS winner will become the LCS champion and represent NA at the 2021's first global competition, the MSI, or the Mid-Season Invitational. The domestic record for North America will conclude with the LCS Championship, which will combine the team's spring and summer record. The LCS Championship has been fine-tuned to prevent teams from playing two series in the same week, to avoid rematches until later in the playoffs, and to give side selection advantages to teams that most recently dropped out of the upper bracket. So it's refreshing to see a new format that's well planned out to 
avoid mistakes from previous seasons, I'm going to be eyeing the players and see how they really feel about this. Blast Premier, they also announced 2021 plans with a $2.48 million prize pool. The Blast Premier Championship in 2021 will be taking place from February to December and will begin with the global Blast Premier Qualifying Series, which according to the release, will offer opportunities to all regions to qualify for the advanced stages. From there, the successful teams will complete in the Blast Premier Spring and Fall Showdowns. If successful, the teams will advance to the Spring and Fall Showdowns, and the penultimate Blast event will be the World Final, similar to the current 2020 event. Blast Premier member teams will automatically earn a place in the Fall and Spring groups, and winners of the Blast Premier Spring and Fall Finals, Flashpoint 3 and 4, ESL Pro League 13 and 14, and the Valve Fall Major will also qualify for the World Final. Non-team members that compete in the Blast Premier events will also receive a participation fee, a new addition to the Blast Premier season in 2021. Blast, they've really been killing it for the past year in regards to production and content, and while they've had their fair share of criticism, I'm expecting to see some great things from them in 2021 as well. Esports has been approved for inclusion as a medaled sport in the 19th annual Asian Games 2022 taking place in Hangzhou, China. In the same meeting that esports was announced as a medaled sport, breakdancing was also approved to be included in the Asian Games here. Official game titles to be played during the event have not been disclosed at this time in writing. However, at the 2018 Asian Games held in Jakarta, six games were included as demonstration titles, that being League of Legends, Arena Valor, Pro Evolution Soccer, StarCraft 2, Hearthstone, and Clash Royale. So this is a nice touch to be incorporated into the Asian Games. My real question question here is will this just seemingly be another esports tournament or will this be something different either way the mainstream attention is more of the benefit here so congrats to them and thank you all so much for supporting this week in esports for this year all the sources are in the comments down below but once again it's been an honor doing this for y'all i'm going to be taking a couple weeks off just for the break and happy holidays for everyone as well if you do know someone who might be interested in this please share with them i would really appreciate it and like always take care and i will see you all in 2021 have a great one everybody